Hi, this is Brian Forster, and today we're exploring a site in Turkey called San Simeon, which was a monastery and place of uh, religious practice and pilgrimage from about 550 AD into the 1200s. Now, unfortunately, there are lots of these giant turbines located in the same location. But what we're going to see is that this was clearly originally a megalithic site and then likely there was a, a series of cataclysms that struck it, like at other locations that we find in Egypt and Peru, for example, and then it was repaired during the Christian time period. So in the back wall you can see the repair work that is on the top and in the center of the wall. The rest of it most of it at least, is the limestone bedrock itself. So the site was originally sculpted from the bedrock, and it's highly unlikely that this was done during the time period of 550 AD and onwards. Again, look at the blocks on the left-hand side on the top. And the fact that this was sculpted out of the bedrock. So this is what, again, we see at lots of other ancient sites um, in Im important megalithic locations such as Peru and Bolivia and Egypt, but also here in Turkey. There is the central pillar where San Simeon supposedly spent the latter 40 years of his life preaching with the Chester there to show a sense of scale. That again is the sculpted bedrock. And in behind, you see obviously that the walls have been damaged and repaired and damaged again. And here again, if you look at the upper part of the wall in the background, you can see clearly that it has been repaired. So this is a short video, part of the series that I did from our recent tour of Turkey in September of 2019. And the main function of it, of it is simply, once again, to show you the difference between the repair work that you can see and the older megalithic work. This again, clearly you see on the top, where repairs have been made as compared to the massiveness of the megalithic bedrock work. And actually, I'd never heard of this site before. It just happened to be on our itinerary when we went. We were all pleasantly surprised to find another megalithic site in Turkey. And stay tuned for an upcoming video or series of them about other locations that we visited in Turkey, such as megalithic Hattusha, and you'll see lots of evidence of lost ancient high technology machine tool work. Hi, this is Brian Forster, and we're very close to the Mediterranean in Turkey. And what we're looking at, look at the wall on the left. This is the beginning of what's called Titus's Tunnel supposedly created, first started by Vespasian in 70 AD, continued by Titus, Roman Emperor, in 80 AD, and completed by Antonius Pius in 161 AD. Now this, I believe, what you just saw on the right, is Roman work, but there's no way that I believe that this huge um, opening in the bedrock was done solely with hand tools. It's just too big a work. Again, look at the left-hand side and look at the right-hand side. You can see that the bedrock, which is limestone, but it's also metamorphosed limestone, almost perfectly flat surfaces, vertical surfaces. And as we continue on, continue looking at the wall on the left. Again, very flat. And we haven't even reached Titus's tunnel yet. So as we continue along, again, you can see the flat surfaces in the bedrock. And here, this shows you the depth of how big it is 
and how much work would have been required. I think this is definitely a candidate for lost ancient high technology and was found and then fine-tuned by the Romans. I don't think the Romans did this out of the bedrock and were able to... This here, this could be a natural surface. And there in the background, you can see that the giant wall continues. There on the left-hand side, you saw some shaping there, of the limestone. This is a classic Roman arch, so of course this would have been the work of the Romans. Not particularly super fine workmanship, but then again, the big wall continues on the left side and now on both sides. Now this is the beginning of the actual Titus's tunnel and is almost a mile long through the bedrock. The ceiling a minimum of 20 feet tall. The Romans, of course, did have steel chisels and other hand tools, but I think this is way too big of a construction project to have been done solely by hand during Roman times. And again, we continue along. You can see a water channel that has recently been repaired on the right-hand side. That was also probably a, a Roman work. So either this initially was um, something created by water erosion over the course of millions of years, or it's a very good example of lost ancient high technology that was then fine-tuned during the Roman time period. As we walk out, once again, look at the flatness of the wall.